Juan here, and today we're going to talk about a BT4 tier list that we made on stream between myself and a couple of friends, and hopefully this tier list gives you all a little bit more insight on what to look forward to in the BT4 format. And so, I do want to give a quick shout out really really quickly. I do have a Discord that I recently just started up, the Huang Zero Discord. If you want the link to that, it will be in the description below. Other than that, let's get started. So we're going to start off with the A tier. And the best deck in the format, most likely, is going to be Yellow War Greymon. So the reason why Yellow War Greymon is arguably the best deck in the format is because, for one, the biggest check to War Greymon that was in the Japanese format was Nidhogg, and because of the HPD and the Argo 5 hit, um, War Greymon's a bit more uncontested in the English format, right? But that's not to say that it's unbeatable, there are probably a couple of decks that can challenge it, but overall this deck is really, really powerful. Not only does it have access to multi-attacking, it has access to board clearing, it also has access to new tools such as Chaos Mon, Blinding Light, that really, really accelerate its game plan. It's a hyper-aggressive deck that can simultaneously play tempo, simultaneously play control. It's really a jack-of-all-trades. The big thing to note about this deck, though, is that War Greymon is very, very reliant on being at 3 security in order to proc all of its effects such as Anja Woman and such. And so, try and play around that if you can, although it's kind of hard since War Greymon burns 1 security and Blinding Light burns another, so do keep that in mind. But they, if they are at 0, they cannot use War Greymon effect to restand at minus 6k, so do keep that in mind. Coming up next, we have OTK Green. I actually think OTK Green is really, really powerful in this upcoming format. It was not a thing in the Japanese BT4, mostly because we did not have the Promo Palmon during that format, but we do have Promo Palmon for our BT4. Um, Promo Palmon, if you don't know what it does, is when this card is Digi Bursted, we are able to give one of our Digimon jamming. So how OTK Green functions is that you use Grand Kuagamon Promo, who says Digi Burst 2, give one Digimon plus one security attack, and this is not once per turn. So we Digi Burst twice, give plus two security attack, swing the Grand Kuagamon for three damage. It has jamming, by the way, most likely because of the Palmon. And then after you swing for three, you go into Chaos Mon, and then Chaos Mon swings for another three. And so you eliminate up to six security from your opponent, which is really, really powerful. And then after that, you just swing like once, and the game is over. Deck is really good. Um... It's stronger than uh, some other like burst variants, that, burst decks rather, that we will see in this format, but the thing that makes it so much better compared to those is the fact that it's in green, which means it has access to tools such as the Digisorption from Blossomon. It has hit one hidden potential discovered, which is still very significant. It has access to both Chaos Mons, so Chaos Mon uh, with Dark Dramon Arm and Chaos Mon with Voldemort Arm, and also has access to Nidhogg, who if your OTK goes off and then you get clapped back or you get board wiped in response, then you can Nidhogg their response. So it's really, really powerful. Coming up next, we do have Mega Zoo. It is green, blue, yellow Mega Zoo, or as uh, people called it on stream, Sierra Mist. So the big thing about this Mega Zoo is that it incorporates blue elements like the Jamming Vmon and whatnot as your bottom end, and then it uses cards such as Kokaida's Breath and the Wolf Claw. And how Wolf Claw works, if you don't know, for memory blue option, you are able to summon a Digimon from underneath one of your stacks. And when you do, it does proc the on-play effect. So the concept is, now because we got the access to both Chaos Mons, is you play a Magna Dramon or you play a Puppet Mon hard, you use their effects, you Digivolve into Chaos Mon, and then you Wolf Claw that Puppet and Magna Dramon out it. And then you can reuse their on-play effects. That's really, really powerful. Huge potential. This also works in security. So for example, if you have a Chaos Mon with like a Puppet Mon underneath, and you hit a wolf, they hit your Wolf Claw on security, you can call the Puppet Mon out and then just stun their stuff. Like it's really, really powerful. This is like the premier Zoo deck in my opinion. Zoo is extremely strong in this format, so do keep that in mind. Coming up next, we do have Black Metal Garurumon that is in purple. This is another promo card. Uh, the thing about Black Metal Garurumon is that it has the highest ceiling in terms of purple decks. Um, Black Metal Garurumon, if you don't know, is Digi Burst 2. You may cast a 7 or less cost option for free from your hand. And this includes cards such as Trump Sword, Hell's Gate, Nailbone. Um, Nailbone being the biggest. Nailbone is a 7 cost option that says you may revive 1 level 4 and 1 level 3 from your drop zone. So you, if you cast double Nailbone, you get four bodies for free, and then from there you can just out-tempo your opponent. It's really, really powerful. Um, the deck is very combo-eccentric, it's very piece-reliant, but if you can resolve those pieces, then it's a really, really powerful deck. And then finally, the last deck in tier A, in my opinion, is Rookie Rush. Rookie Rush does receive a really, really big buff in the form of Strabimon, Lobomon, and then Aqua Viper. Lobomon gives Rookie Rush another kill shot, meaning that once they get all that chip in, now they can digivolve over their Davis and then go to Lobomon and go for game. 
Scrapeymon also gives them a way to filter for these level mons as well as filter for the Scrapeymons and filter for Davises. So now you've added a little bit more consistency to the deck. They've also received another 5k rookie in green from Leolmon, who is a Aurora Mon clone. And then the Aqua Viper that I mentioned is it allows you to bounce one of your Digimon to bounce two of your opponents level four or lower. And this does mean you can recycle your Gabu Mons, you can recycle your XV Mons, you can do a lot of really cool stuff. The big thing about Rookie Rush's format and then why I put it so low on the tier A list. While it is still very powerful, seeing as it has received significant tools, it does struggle into a couple of the tier, uh, the other tier 1 decks, right? Yellow War Greymon has the ability to clear its board, Grand Kuagamon OTK packs Nidhogg, Mega Zoo has just, you know, historically been a really problematic matchup, because you give over so much memory, and then Rookie Rush is unable to deal with that. Um... But the really, really crucial thing that we do need to keep in mind, despite having those bad matchups, is that if people stop thinking about Rookie Rush, right, if we stop teching for Rookie Rush, if we stop playing around Rookie Rush, then Rookie Rush comes back into the forefront because it is still a really, really powerful deck. So I think if you could argue Rookie Rush is somewhere in the high B range territory, but personally, I think a really good Rookie Rush pilot, especially one that knows how to read the meta, can definitely bring this into an A tier. Um, <clears throat> And so, me personally, I feel like uh, I see a lot of potential in this deck, definitely should not sleep on it, it's still really, really powerful, so don't discredit it. But going into B tier now, first off we have the red, slightly purple, yellow Mega Zoo, right? This has become a, a bit popular in the 1.5 English format. This features cards such as Don Devi, actually, right, because you're hard slamming. It features your standard yellow cards and your standard red cards that you often see. So your Magna Anjumons, your Volcanic Jermons. Um, but the big thing that we do see, the big difference is, is that we have access to cards such as Trident Revolver or Lusamon. These give uh, the red, yellow, Mega Zoo variant more, not only more control, but also in general, uh, more sustain as well. So it's just received a straight buff. Mega Zoo, again, is really, really powerful this format as it is um, capable of answering a lot of the decks in the format. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Mega Zoo is really, really huge. Up next is Don Devimon. Don Devi have received significant buffs from the promo pack, the Demi Devimon, who is able to cheat out a free Don Devi. Uh, do keep in mind that Don Devi on release was not very good. He was actually pretty slow as you were, you have, we go into four, you play, play Don Devi for four, and then he didn't do anything, and then you would destroy him, and you would just, you know, your opponent would discard too, and that was about it. Um, <clears throat> but now that you have the ability to go into Don Devi so much faster off of the Demi Devi, Don Devi is actually a very powerful threat, and there's a lot of really cool things you can do. For example, uh, you can Death Claw the Demi Devi stack to summon Don Devi, or you can even Death Claw the Don Devi himself to get a discard too. There's a lot of really cool interactions that you can do with this. This deck has a lot of potential. It's arguably even better than Purple Metal Guru Mon because it's not as peace reliant. So that's something to consider. Following up, we do have Imperial Dramon. Imperial Dramon is still a very, very powerful deck. It does receive a buff in the form of Lobomon and potentially Beowulf Mon. Being given Lobomon means that it can, in the same respect for Rookie Rush, it fit in that kill shot. However, do keep in mind that aside from the Lobomon buff, it didn't receive many other things. So it's still relatively the same thing. It plays relatively the same, but it's still a very powerful deck. Do not sleep on Imperial Dramon. In the same way that you can't sleep on Rookie Rush, this deck can steal games for you if you're not prepared. Following up on Imperial Ultramon, we do have Plutomon. Plutomon is a really, really interesting card. He's similar to Purple uh, Black Metal Garurumon, except instead of casting 7s for free, uh, he casts uh, 6 and below for free on Digivolve, draw 2 as well. So the really big thing about Plutomon is that he doesn't have access to a wide array of options to set, right? He has access to Necrophobia, Heat Viper, and then Hell's Gate. And, you know, everything else after that is, you know, relatively cheap. Um, in BTO5, however, he does receive the card known as Earthshaker, or as I like to refer it, uh, Ichi no Tachi, where it's a really powerful way for Plutomon to not only kill wide, but kill tall with uh, Hell's Gate. But unfortunately, we do not have that, and so we will see Plutomon in the B tier until we get that big buff. Following on Plutomon, we have Mastemon. It's not Mastemon purple, however, it is Mastemon yellow. Mastemon yellow received a huge buff going forward into the BT4 format in the form of Proto, uh, Promo Gatomon. Promo Gatomon states, when this card is played, if you have a purple Digimon, it is a blocker. Also, if you have three or less security when this is played, heal one. So you can Mastemon to revive the Gatomon and get a blocker plus a heal. Um, and the really crazy part about this actually is the mechanic known as Digiburst. For those of you that don't know, like once again, right, as I explain it, you get rid of source material uh, equal to however money it says, and then you can activate this effect. 
The weakness that Yellow Mastimon has always had in comparison to Purple Mastimon is that it didn't have any way to get the pieces into the drop zone, right? You have better pieces, but you needed those pieces to hit the trash, and if they couldn't hit the trash, then it was, you know, a lot weaker. That's where Purple Shine, right? You can discard those pieces that you really wanted into the trash. And so with Digiburst, you're able to Digivolve into, say, your Gatomon, Digivolve into your Petermons, whatever it may be, and then you can revive them after you've Digiburst them. So now you've guaranteed that level 4 that you want to revive. It's a really huge buff to Mastemon. We also do receive the Chaosmon Valder Arm, who if you play Slash Anjumon or something along those lines as the accompaniment, then you can go into Chaos. You can also still play Millennium. Millennium is still really, really powerful, but Mastemon has received a ton of different variety and options. So do keep a lookout on Mastemon. I think this card, this deck in general, is really, really powerful. Following up on that, we do have the red-yellow security control that we've seen uh, come to fruition in the 1.5 English format. Uh, this deck, similar to Megazoo Red-Yellow, did receive buffs. We got Trident Revolver and Lusamon, like we said. While the other variant focuses more on bodies, this one focuses more on the options. I think this is potentially still really powerful, as maybe you're able to blow out Grand Kuwagamon or Wargreymon out of the game. However, you will potentially struggle with decks such as Megazoo variants or the promo Black Metal Garurumon. So, Keep that in mind. If you want to play McDonald's control going forward, you know, it's still pretty good in my opinion. Um, so look forward to that. Up next, we have Good Stuff Blue with Zed Gururumon. The thing about Zed Gururumon and Good Stuff Blue is that, well, in general, Blue, um, it didn't receive the biggest of buffs. Your SRs were Beowulfmon and Mirage Galgamon, both of which weren't exactly, you know, game changers by any means. Um, the act if anything, the actual game changer was Zed Gururumon. Zed Gururumon is when you digivolve into him, Digiburst 2, um, and you can bounce a level 5 or less back to your opponent's hand. Why is this good, you may wonder? Well, let's take let's look at let's look into the meta a little bit. What are some decks that are potentially really, really powerful, right? For example, we have Don Devimon. Don Devimon wants to get those Don Devi out, so he puts the Demi Devimon into his stack. Oh, you bounce the Demi Devi stack, like it's crazy, it's super crazy. Um, there's also cards like the Agunimon or the Lobomon promos that we'll cover in a bit, etc. Like, there's a lot of cards that have really good ESS that proc when destroyed and such like that, um, and Zed Gururumon is a really strong way to deal with those. So if those decks see a rise in popularity, I think Good Stuff Blue can also just rise up as well. In general, Good Stuff Blue does have a lot to offer, um, it's just not as flashy or impressive as the other you know, higher tier decks, but it's still a good deck overall. So if you're looking for a more budget option and you want to play Blue, this is the deck for you. Following on that is the Anubis Rush Purple that was really hyped up in Japan. Anubis Rush Purple is really interesting in the fact that Anubis Mon, uh, when you digivolve into him for 3 cost, you may revive any level 3, and any card revived gains the ability to attack on the same turn, so they gain haste. Anubis Mon does not care about what color he revives, so he can revive any color, including Lusamon, and when we revive Lusamon, we get a free heal 1. Really powerful combo, and then the Lusamon can immediately swing as well, it's really strong. Um, the reason this deck does not see more success, however, is due to the fact that its ceiling is capped a little bit, right? Um, going into BT5, we see a bit more variety when we get Zwart and whatnot, but as of right now, your only option is Millennium on, and that's not exactly the, you know, the best of all options, right? Going uh, forward when we see Grand Kuwaga OTK, Mega Zoo, and War Greymon, so do keep that in mind. But overall, Anubis Rush is still really powerful. If you're looking for a, you know, a bit more of a budget option in comparison to Promo Black Metal or Don Devi or Pluto, it's still pretty good. Unfortunately, you will have to pay for Lusamons, but you still can play this deck without Lusamon. It just won't perform as well. It still has the ability to rush your opponents down, and it's still really strong. Uh, following that is Hercules Kabuterimon. With from the start, like Hercules Kabuterimon is still a really powerful deck because if you hide in raising and then you bring him out, then you're able to just clear boards really efficiently. This deck did receive a hit as HPD was limited to one, and that was really significant because not only does that uh, affect Nidhogg, but it affects Hercules, who has a Digivolution cost of four. But regardless, Hercules is still a really threatening card, especially when hidden in security, so don't sleep on that. 
Now we have Sarismon. Sarismon is a very familiar face to those that played in the English 1.5 format. Sarismon, unlike uh, Hercules or Nidhogg, is not relying on HPD, um, and it's relatively cheap. You can use the Sarismon to set up your Nidhogg by resting your opponent's Digimon, and then you can Nidhogg their, you know, forward away. So it's still really good. Um, the issue that Sarismon does suffer from, unlike Hercules or Grand Kuwaga OTK, is that it's far more peace reliant, right? Because you have to find the download fodder, and especially after Argo level 5 was hit, your download fodder, or Digisorption fodder, rather is much more limited and so do you keep that in mind now we have the Ragnalord Mega Zoo um, so it's very it's what we refer to as Mega Zoo Black this deck did receive some buffs the same respect as Trident Revolver for red and whatnot um, but it didn't receive as large of buffs as black this set was not very impressive so um, if you're playing the red black variant compared to like the red yellow variant or the blue green yellow variant you're you have stronger blockers, but aside from that, you're not offering too much, but regardless, it's still a very powerful deck. Following up, we have Ancient Garurumon with the new Lobomon promo. Uh, this is still this is a pretty interesting deck as you have really huge combo potential since you can use the Ancient Garurumon to fit in an extra four attacks in a single turn, but it's still slightly clunky, it's a bit peace reliant, um, and security is a really big threat to your pieces, so do keep that in mind. But if you're able to pop off, it's pretty strong. And so because of that inconsistency, we placed it a bit low on the B tier. Now we have Shine Greymon. Shine Greymon did not receive any direct buffs per se, right? Because yellow in BG4 is a bit more aggro oriented compared to Shine Greymon's more control style. Um, but yellow is still a really solid foundation, right? Because we got cards such as Lucimon, like we mentioned. We got cards like Blinding Light. And Shine Greymon overall is still a very solid deck. Like it's, it's still pretty good. Um, if you want to play the more control style, you can, you can still mess with Shine, but it definitely uh, would need to be tested more. And I'm sure a few of you are surprised to see this, but Fast Omni Red is now a low B tier deck. And the reason why is because Red isn't very good in BT4. I know I've been saying Red got a lot of cool tools, but Control Red got a lot of new tools, aka Trident Revolver and such. Um, but Fast Red Omni didn't receive anything. Um, BT4 places much more of an emphasis on the mid game, right? Because we have uh, Digi Burst from cards like Lilamon, War Growlmon, etc. And Fast Omnimon doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't use any of that well. So as a result, Fast Omnimon is a bit outdated compared to a lot of the new BT4 decks. So you can still play it, you can still probably get some results, but it's not going to be easy. You're definitely going to have a really rough mid game. Right, well, Omnimon fast gets to go to you know Omnimon relatively quickly, um, and then you have decks like OTK Grand Kuwaga who just do six damage in one turn, or you have Yellow War Greymon who can uh, War Growlmon plus Slash to delete any level six deck. Like it's just kind of crazy. Following up, we have the Blastmon Punch deck that you runs the Zubagon Punch. This deck is pretty pretty cool. Because they got the new promo, Sun Arizamon, that gives a piercing. Um, and if you Zubagon Punch, Blast One will swing for 3 damage, it's pretty big. But it still suffers from the fact that you are relying on that Sun Arizamon, you're relying on Blast Bond, not getting Chump blocked if you don't have the Sun Arizamon. Like, there's a lot of conditions that have to be met. Um, and overall, the Blast Mon deck is just an inferior version of OTK Green, who is able to bypass that fact because they have piercing. In, like built in from the chaos mod so to keep that in mind you can definitely steal wins with this deck if your opponent is not expecting the punch right um but aside from that it's it's okay and then ancient greymon um ancient greymon without the Agunimon promo is like a c tier deck uh with the Agunimon promo it's you know it's a low b tier deck and the reason why it's rated so lowly is because any blocker completely cucks it um and you're messing with security, so if you hit strong security effects, it's potentially really dangerous. Especially given how strong, uh, or how much of an emphasis English players have placed on security style decks, like Mega Zoo, Security Control, etc. And so it really makes decks like Ancient Greymon hard. Um, and I fully expect these decks to adapt cards like Delicate Plan and War Greymon to address with this. Delicate Plan, Ancient Greymon might just slap. So. I'm not saying don't. I'm not saying to sleep on this, but I'm saying don't get your hopes up too much, as you are going to be in for a bit of an uphill climb. 
And then finally, we get into the C or tier decks. First off, we have D Brigade. D Brigade is a very Ricky Rush eccentric deck where you're looking to fill your drop zone, spam Command Dramons, and then go into Dark Dramon. The reason why this is a C tier deck is because of the interaction with Dark Dramon and Chaosmon. When you revive Dark, I mean, not revive. When you play Dark Dramon and it gains haste, if you Digivolve into Chaosmon, that Chaosmon cannot attack because it does not pass over the haste it received from Dark Dramon, meaning its summoning sickness would then come back. Um, and as a result, this deck is actually a lot slower than a lot of people believe. But it's still a pretty pretty cool alternative to Rookie Rush if you want to go more of that playstyle. And then we have. Uh, Zubigon Punch, Black War Greymon. The difference between this and the Blastmon variant is that this can attack three times in a turn. The only issue, however, is that you are relying on seeing cards like Lightning Blade or Gogma, etc. Because you are, are going to struggle to hit that 16k threshold that is required from Zubigon Punch. This deck is also very fragile to security, so do keep that in mind. We have Mirage Galgamon OTK style of decks. This is basically the Old Force Imperial Ultramon replacement in BT4. This deck is so so. It is unblockable, however, you're still susceptible to security, and it doesn't do anything in particularly special in comparison to good stuff Blue and Imperial. Um, but if you do want to play Mirage Galgamon, it's not a terrible deck. It's just I don't see it winning any tournaments anytime soon. If you place Mirage Galgamon as the emphasis, Maybe you can use Mirage Galgamon as like a fast Omnimon secondary or use it in good stuff blue, right? But not as a focus. We have Control Red coming up after Mirage Galgamon. Um, Control Red did receive some buffs. However, it's still lacking a little bit in the form of like the Digimon control options Red got aren't too hot. The options are pretty hot, not so much the Digimon. So that's why Security Control Red Yellow or Mega Zoo Red Yellow are really strong because it uses the options rather than the Digimon, but this deck has more emphasis on the Digimon, since, hence it's why it's lacking. And then finally we have Lilithmon, Lilithmon Loop. Um, Lilithmon with Jack Raid is able to just spam constant memory gain. It's pretty cool actually, um, the only issue is that you do that and then you don't get anywhere very quickly. Um, so this deck right now is not very good, going to BT5, when we get fused into the ultimate Digimon in Zort, it becomes a lot better, right? But as a BT4, Lilithmon is going to be at the bottom of the C tier list, um, seeing as it doesn't, it's not proactive enough and it doesn't do anything, but it's still really cool to resolve, so we put it on still. So hopefully this was insightful. Um, I know I didn't cover the no, too, too in depth for a lot of the decks, but I want to save that insight and save those analysis for the more intricate uh, deck profile videos when we get to that, right? When we analyze those decks individually and we can talk about it more in depth, talk about the combo pieces that make up those decks, etc. But I just wanted to give you a frame of reference of to where uh, these decks will stand in the BT4 format so you can prepare um, what you want and such. So thank you guys for watching and, you know, like, comment, subscribe, and hopefully we see you guys next video. So take it easy.